So folks, I know the bar for this is really high. I know the bar for this is astronomically high, but today might have been one of the dumbest days in the entire life of old Donnie in terms of what he did. Yes, but also how what he's doing is distracting him from the absolutely massive peril that he's currently in and also how these recent moves by Trump are pissing off the most loyal people people within his camp. We already spoke about some of this earlier, but since he made his quote unquote announcement earlier today, which just ended up being basically a glorified, vastly overpriced card sales scheme, scam, whatever you want to call it, definitely stupid. Everyone's turning on him. And so I have a couple things for you, but this culminates in the fact that Jack Smith on a day like today, where Trump was being a giant dumbass caught him off guard, making his single biggest move yet. Jack Smith made his biggest move yet, and Trump isn't paying any attention. But first, listen to this first clip, which is Trump cronies tearing into him for this stupid project, and then a top legal analyst saying that Trump should be focused less on selling baseball cards and more in avoiding prison, because that's what Jack Smith's about to do to him. So I opened the, the show with this because to, to drop this video, which is a substantive video, it's, you know, it's a good policy platform for 2024. But to do that when this stupid NFT thing was dropped the same day, uh, I had Sargon of a card on my show today. And I said, hey, what do you think of this new First Amendment video from the president? He said, what, what First Amendment video? And this is a guy who follows American politics with, with a magnifying glass. And, and as soon as I saw this thing drop, I texted Mar-a-Lago. I, I texted the comm team and I said, who the hell had the idea for this NFT thing? And, and then I get a response from the team, no name, saying, oh, it's a business partner of the president's. What? I didn't run it past Mar-a-Lago. I mean, the sheer insanity. We need serious people because the republic's fabric is in danger. Yeah. If Steve Bannon isn't at Mar-a-Lago, if Newt Gingrich isn't at Mar-a-Lago, at, at least Cash Patel or some Somebody sane should say, guys, just can you hold the Superman, you yeah. know, cartoons until we, we've got some freedom of speech back first? You know, Steve, yeah, go ahead. Steve. Screw, by the way, screw the business part. I want to hear about that right now. Yeah. This thing was so powerful and you're absolutely correct. I've been people have been blowing up on the NFT. We're going to play that in a second. Nobody even talked about this. This is the most right. substantial policy thing he's come out Bingo. with. Bingo! No, a, 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 a substantial and correct policy uh, address was completely drowned out by marginalia, right? And what we need right now is maniacal focus. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we are losing our country. We have an open border, we have an economy that is tanking, and we have depraved indoctrination of children going on in our country right now. That's what time it is right now in America, and we need focus, including focus from the 45th president, who should be devoting all of his political capital right now to stopping this omnibus. 100%. Let's play. I'm going to play the NFT, and then you, if you haven't seen it, we'll play a little bit of the NFT, and then I want to bring Sub back in and Steve. Hello, everyone. This is Donald Trump, hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. Okay. These okay. cards I feature some anymore. of the... I can't do this anymore. He's one of the greatest presidents in history, but I got to tell you, whoever, but business partner, and anybody in the comms team, and anybody in Mar-a-Lago, and I love the folks down there, but we're at war. Mm -hmm. They ought to be fired today. You came out with something that's so important, which I still don't think gets to the heart of it. And hey, you don't have three harder cores than Cortez, Bannon, and Seb Gorka. <laughs> so when they're, and we're getting blown up all day on this. Seb, walk me through it. Walk me through your assessment of this, sir. Never should have happened. I mean, so look, it's fun, it's hyperbolic, but whoever wrote that, that pitch should be fired and should never be involved in any bit. I don't want them making the, the, the presidential napkins for Mar-a-Lago, okay? Anybody who came up with that. And the president's war chest is, is pretty strong right now. We've got two years until the actual 
you know, inauguration. We don't have time to waste. If you want to do this kind of stuff, you know, have 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 a, have a peon do it. Okay, get get somebody who's recognized in the MAGA world to you know put their face to this thing and do it. But the president should not be involved with this. When we find out weekly meetings with the FBI, with ODNI, with yeah. DHS to censor yeah. the yes. most important media platform yes. in America, and and you know, cash was on my show as well today. Says, where are the real emails, Elon? We We now have some evidence to mull multiple weeks worth of subpoenas demanding any and all communications with the twice impeached ex-president that give us a pretty clear sense of what federal prosecutors are looking at and for. We learned this week that special counsel Jack Smith has now demanded testimony and or records from local election officials in all seven battleground states that were central to the failed attempt by the ex-president and his allies to use fake electors and baseless lawsuits to overturn Trump's 2020 defeat. Those subpoenas, nearly identical in their very specific requests for Trump-related records, are among the first known from Smith since he was assigned to oversee Trump-related key aspects of the January 6th investigation. Joining our coverage, Neil Katyal, he's former acting solicitor general and currently a professor at Georgetown School of Law and an MSNBC legal analyst. David Jolly is still here. So, Neil, we take these little pieces of the iceberg that that pop up and, and And we try to understand what we can about the nature of the special counsel investigation. But what, in your expert view, do you see? So I think you're right about these pieces of an iceberg. And if I'm Donald Trump right now looking at these different pieces, I would spend a lot less time spending my a lot less time like selling tacky overpriced action cards and a lot more time thinking about, hey, I'm facing some criminal charges here. Uh, or potentially. So to me, the subpoenas do two things. On the small level, they indicate that the Justice Department is taking a very close look at this fake elector scheme, which I think should make Trump quite nervous. And then I think on the bigger level, it's really them saying, we're not just concerned about January 6th, we're concerned about the events leading up to January 6th. And that means they're going to scrutinize all the ways in which Trump attempted to overturn the election. Neil, what, what, is, what do we take with the fact that there was consciousness of illegality? Greg Jacobs, the vice president's former chief counsel, testified that they knew and they told Eastman that this was illegal. And there is some indication that, that Trump was aware of the illegality and, and unconstitutionality of this plot. And then Trump's fingerprints. I mean, in, in addition to the subpoenas, if they comb, and I'm sure they've already done this, if they comb through Trump's Twitter feed and look at the visitor log, um, and I guess I shouldn't assume anything about the Trump White House. It's, it's possible they burn their visitor logs. But he was hauling people in at the height of COVID, um, state elected officials to work them over. I think some folks from Michigan came in. We've all heard the call from Raffensburg. I mean, his fingerprints were all over this in public. It doesn't seem like a, a particularly tedious task to tie Trump to the fake electors plot. I I think that's right, Nicole, with one caveat. There's a difference between criminal liability and kind of just moral responsibility. The congressional investigation into 1-6, and we'll hear that report next week, it sounds like, is on the non-criminal side, although they're obviously contemplating a referral to the department on the criminal side. But the difference is this. In criminal law, there's a concept called mens rea. It's not just enough that your fingerprints are on the dirty deeds. It's also got to be that you specifically intended them. And so that is always, it's always the biggest problem in any prosecution, not just these ones, but, you know, getting into someone's mind particularly when they can assert the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination, which Trump loves, it's his favorite amendment, um, you know, that makes the prosecution hard. So that's where you're trying to get, this. Inve- these investigations are trying to get at is, did Trump legitimately think that he won the election and this was all just a way in which a normal winner would behave or did he do something untoward? And the evidence is sure looking like it's the latter, but that's why the investigation I think has taken so long, why you see all of these subpoenas going to these seven states. So you can see there, like these are not moderate people. These are not anti-Trump Republicans. Like Bannon is literally going to jail for Trump. Like these are these are Trumpers through and through. Like, I, I won't say they've never been critical, but these are all deep Trumpers. 99.9% of when willing in some cases to go to prison for him, go to jail.
And they're like, this is stupid. It's a stupid project. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. It's it, on all of that, just objectively on its own. But it's also a sign that the guy's not focusing on the job he's supposedly trying to seek again. That whatever you want to say about Trump, let's just put aside the fact that he's an evil monster. Let's put aside the fact that ideologically we disagree with him, the, me and 99% of you watching on 99.9% .9 of all the issues. Put that aside. Just from a purely objective perspective, somebody running for president should not have an NFT baseball card system that they're focusing on. They should be focusing on running for gosh darn president. And right now in that second clip, it notes there that Trump doing this is extra dumb right now because it just brings attention to him in all the bad ways. The NFTs are associated largely with predatory and schemy and scammy processes at the best of times. And all this stuff does it show a man that is instead of you know being quiet and being reserved and being respectful is making an ass of himself in front of the world while charges are looming and jack smith just made a huge move by impaneling a grand jury of his own jack smith has created his own grand jury to take down trump to investigate others as well, to c collect and, you know, investigate evidence and collect testimony and all of that. And it's a huge move because without a grand jury, you can't do a lot of work. And critically, without a grand jury, you can't ultimately bring charges. Like a grand jury has to okay a lot of the things you're going to do against Trump and his other top level cronies. And people are noticing that. There's a great you know, juxtaposition here from, law from a lawyer who's also taken down Trump in other cases about how how Trump is screwed right, right now because Jack Smith is focused and he's off guard and it says here and the bottom part first it says new subpoena from Jack Smith shows new grand jury to consider evidence in the 2023 and it says here Donald Trump's major announcement was a collectible of himself Jack Smith's major announcement was in paneling a new grand jury to renew evidence renew review evidence and issue indictments and he didn't even announce it I wonder which one of these guys is going to prevail that's the, that's the story right there folks Donald Trump is losing right now um, because the facts are against him. Of course, yes. Like, even if Donald Trump was playing this right, like, even if he had the best lawyers and he was had the best conduct, you know, the facts are against him on Mar-a-Lago, especially. He stole the documents. All the good lawyering in the world can't erase that black and white fact, at least not all the way. But he's playing this so dumb. Jack Smith just made the single biggest move he needs to charge Trump. Like, before anything can happen, before those charges, those words we want to hear, Donald Trump has been charged, Donald Trump has been indicted, Jack Smith needed to build his grand jury. You build grand juries to do more than one thing, but you, pr at the end of the day, you build them to charge. This is a Jack Smith move to charge Trump. There's no other way to look at it. And so this is the single biggest moment. And it comes on a day where Trump did his single most embarrassing thing.